Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronic, you're here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 PvP primaries in Destiny 2. And of course, as always, this video is completely based on my own opinion, completely subjective based on my playstyle, my opinion, as well as the opinion playstyle of my buddy Zoomzy, who helped create this list and get the gameplay you can see on screen right now. You can find a link to his Twitch in the description down below. And of course, as always, this video is accompanied by a beautiful spreadsheet, as always, you can find it on my Discord server, link in the description description down below on the channel hashtag spreadsheet stocks and again this spreadsheet would not be possible without your support so please consider checking out my patreon so I can continue making these spreadsheets because honestly it takes 10 to 20 hours every single week and if only 0.01% of you gave five dollars a month I would be able to make minimum wage and that's all I really want is so that I can continue doing what I love and providing an incredible product for you guys to use and with that for those who support me I also have a giveaway going on right now with an Astro A10 headset and a blue your microphone again link in the description down below on how to enter and finally my nexus store has a bunch of different discounts going on right now including a bunch of different destiny 2 and ck3 stuff check a link in the description down below if you want to buy some steam keys for any of these items moving on let's go ahead and get into the main section of the video let's take a deep look at my spreadsheets if you've never seen them before this is what they look like dark theme color-coded pictures information little nodes my recommendations for legendary weapons every single thing here including rankings sub rankings honorable mentions uh, best in classes for things that are not ranked. Everything I know about these weapons are all here. Admittedly, not every weapon in the game. Obviously, I have to keep it small because this thing does lag a lot. But this is going to be a great resource for you, especially if you don't know what to do. You could easily just go here and say, hey, I like auto rifles. What should I use? Ah, best in class. I'll check that out. And obviously, I don't really do my top 10s like most people. Instead of just telling you about the top 10, I'm going to be going through each major category and talking about how they fit in the meta. So let's go ahead and get started with the worst class of weapon and work our way upwards starting off with the bow now the bow is in my opinion considered a primary sniper where it's all about that crit headshot very infinite range and in my opinion pvp most use you get out of a bow is with some type of wombo combo using that bow shot getting a headshot and quickly swapping to for example a high range hand cannon to finish him off for example using subtle calamity with very good accuracy then swap over to a sturm and get that high range very instant kill outside of that it doesn't really have that much of a punch oftentimes i'd rather use a sniper rifle oftentimes i'd rather use a shotgun or any other primary ammo weapon i just don't find times that i really like using a bow for the only primary ammo grenade launcher in the game, the Fighting Lion. Again, just like the bows, this is more of a wombo combo. Set up that first shot, flush enemies out of cover, swap to another primary, or for example, a sniper rifle to finish off the target. For the next major section, we have the submachine guns. As a disclaimer, both Zoomzy and I are controller users who play on PC, and the recoil with SMGs is much higher than you would have with mouse and keyboard. Oftentimes, double the recoil, and as such, the SMGs are very difficult to control with controllers. But more than that, SMGs are lacking in so many different regards. Firstly, there's a very low kills per clip, maybe 0 to 1 kills per clip before you have to reload, I meaning you can't handle multiple people at the same time without using your other weapons. Secondly, the range that they occupy is very close to the range that the shotguns occupy, and with the nerf to sniper rifles and just the general power of shotguns and felwinter still being in the meta, it's really hard to compete against those shotguns. I just don't find that much use out of these SMGs. If you guys know of certain ways to make them better, better or to understand them and how their uses in pvp please let me know in the comments down below because i want to know more about it because i really just don't get it the next section we have these sidearms in my opinion these sidearms do what the smgs do the very close range primary weapon but they do it better the burst versions of them the two bursts and three bursts have much higher kills per clip before being needing to reload their stability and control perks allow them to really reach out to the same ranges as the smgs and they also kill enemies quite quickly my personal pick for these sidearms is going to be Traveler's Chosen. Not only a good stats all around kind of weapon, it also has an incredible perk that allows you to get a lot of ability energy. And if your build depends on ability energy, you get a lot of it. Especially in PvP where every kill gives you times three of that gathering light, meaning 30% to all of your abilities for every single kill, which is very strong. Beyond that, the three bursts are all doing very well, in my opinion, much better than any of the other options. But unfortunately, just like the SMGs, if the enemies have a shotgun, they're usually going to win that fight. So this is more of a backup weapon if you run out of ammo in your first weapon as a double primary meta, kind of like Call of Duty, switching weapons is faster than reloading. 
Beyond that, I don't really have too much use for sidearms. And in the last major unranked section, we have the auto rifles, which took a very big swing this season. Last season, I had Nong Hunger and the Summoner at number two. The season before that, Hardlight and Soros Regime at like number one and number three. These things have definitely fallen quite some way. Now, if you did not know, on Beyond Light, they did nerf the 600 auto rifles to take one extra shot for their optimal and one extra shot for their average time to kill, bringing them from 0.7 to 0.8 and 0.9 to 1.0. So in every scenario, you're having, on average, about one extra shot needed to kill an enemy. And in my opinion, that's not really what tanked auto rifles in the meta. In my opinion, the fact that hand cannons got a huge range buff across the board is going to be the primary reason. The fact that they can actually compete against auto rifles at their maximum range without having too much range fall off and damage fall off, also having better aim assistance at those ranges has definitely upset the auto rifles in Crucible. Keeping in mind that the optimal and average time to kill for 140 hand cannons is worse than auto rifles. And as far as my pick for auto rifles, go the 600 rpm auto rifles are still doing the best the great combination of clip size stability range perk options handling is going to go to the 600 auto rifles and my pick is still going to be hard light because of that increased range drop off it used to be infinite range now it's just a higher range drop off than before and the exotic tier stats just make it a much better weapon than everything else around it and in the first majorly ranked section the third best type of weapon type in the game for pvp is going to be these scout rifles and the fact that you see scout rifles in this position really shows how much the meta has been changed. I have been poo-pooing on scout rifles for such a long time, talking about how they have too much range for what they gain, but in this iteration, the buffs to their aim assistance cone, the removal of the auto rifle domination, and just in general, everything pushing out range-wise because of the hand cannon range buff means scout rifles have a lot more use. My particular choice of my favorite Sky Rifles are going to be that 200 RPM. Now, normally I don't group up legendaries and exotics together because oftentimes those exotic perks make them very unique. But in the case of Multi Might and Multi Tool, the most unique thing about it is going to be being able to see radar while aiming down sights. Outside of that, the stats are pretty similar to a lot of other 200 RPM scout rifle. An honorable mention to the trusty, the new raid scout rifle rapid fire frame, one of the best stats we've seen in a rapid fire scout rifle. If you can control that stability, you've got yourself a very nice weapon and with only a couple different damage bonuses from charge with light or different other bonuses, you can get this thing to a four shot kill, which is very nice. Moving on to the second best weapon class in the game, we have the Pulse Rifles. Now, the Pulse Rifles have always had places in the top 10, not only as a pretty easy to use weapon for new players, it's also comfortable in that mid to mid long range zone where a lot of meta weapons are occupying these days. And they also got an incredible representative with the new No Time to Explain exotic Pulse Rifle that's doing extremely well. When it comes to the general archetypes, I feel the 390 adaptive frame Pulse Rifles are doing better than all the other things with the 340s close behind. When it comes down to it, yes, the 390 Pulse Rifles do take at least three bursts to kill an enemy, oftentimes a lot worse DPS than the 340s, but they're a lot easier to handle, both in handling, stability, and because of that stability, range. Even though we did get that nice buff to the high impacts last season that allowed them to get that easier two burst kill, they're still a little bit more difficult to handle, both in handling and stability, even with the maximum best possible perks, they still fall outside the no time to explore. Shadow. And finally, we have the no time to explain, which honestly removes a lot of the issues with those stats. Great handling, great range, great stability, and an extra damage perk with the time slip is everything you could have asked for for the 340 Pulse Rifles and puts it at number two in the meta. To be honest, there's a lot of great Pulse Rifles just in general. You could go with the four burst 450 aggressives. You could go with the 453 burst like Chattering Bone. You could go with the Vigilant Swing. A lot of things are doing really well. These are just the ones that I found were at the cream of the crop. And just as a note across the board, this season we have more weapon damage perks than ever before. We have Charge with Light with High Energy Fire. We have the new Stasis Weapon Bonus from Destroying Crystals. We have Empowering Rifts. We have the buffs on the weapons. You know, the Kill Clip, the Rampage, the Multi-Kill Clip. We have so many different options to boost our weapon damage bonuses that the fact that the 390 Pulse Rifles don't normally two-burst kill with a slight amount of damage bonus, they do consistently two-burst kill. Being that they're much more comfortable to use, a lot more forgiving, it just feels better these days. And this goes across the 
the board with a lot of different options, where certain things were very close to getting a kill very early on, they can now do that quite easily. And you'll see a lot of the same stuff in the hand cannon. And finally, the number one best ranked class of weapons is the hand cannon. Not only for the sheer number of ranked items, number one, three, four, five, six, nine, and honorable mention, but also because it has the number one option, which honestly surprised me of which that was. There's really a lot going on when we talk about these hand cannons. Last season, I would have probably told you that the 150 Sunshot, the Ace of Spades, or the Thorn were gonna be at number one this season, but there's a lot going on that I didn't realize. Firstly, when it comes to optimal time to kill, the 140s do have an advantage over the 120s. They both take three headshots to kill an enemy, where the 120s do a little bit more comfortably that they can also get a body shot. Secondly, once they both get a major damage bonus, i.e. high energy fire, the 120s can two-shot headshot, and it's, again, not that hard to get a small major damage bonus because there's so many of them. Whereas the 140 hand cannons require two major damage bonuses, i.e., for example, Memento Mori plus high energy fire to get that two-shot headshot. Secondly, because of the range boost across the board, especially to the 120s, not only getting RPM and an even bigger bonus than everything else, makes them a lot more competitive against auto rifle, oftentimes edging over auto rifle range, getting that stickiness, getting that aim assistance, and just in general, getting that great damage fall off. So I would say the reason why the 120s are doing better than the 140s as far as my rankings is because they're easier, simpler to use at much better ranges than before. With the general stuff out of the way, I just wanted to mention a few things about each of the different options. First of all, I have an audible mention for the posterity because the new hand cannon 180 RPMs are not really that great, but this one has the perfect 100 recoil pattern, very easy to use, a decent clip size because of the increase to the 180s clip size, and a lot of great perks that are dropping from the raid. Just not enough to make it in the top 10. At number 9, we have the Sunshot, a weapon because of the fact it has a better optimal time to kill at 150 RPM, we thought was going to be doing a lot better. Better. However, it's also really not that easy to get headshots. Oftentimes, explosive rounds will flinch the enemy, but in this instance, it also creates a huge muzzle flash and also a big splash on the target. More often than not, you're going to go for that four body shot kill, and that's not optimal. When it comes to the 140 RPM hand cannons, in which I have so many different in this slot A, B, and C, both exotics and legendaries, they all function in a very similar way. I think that the Dire Promise and Spare Rations are going to be the best option for their aim assistance and their perk options and the just general ease of use and the fact that they're kinetic. For the 6B, I picked Lumina and Thorn for their incredible sets of stats, 100 recoil pattern, 90 something recoil pattern. They both have a damage perk option with the Noble Rounds, as well as the Mark of the Devourer. Both of them are doing really well. And finally, for 6C, I've chosen the rest of them just because they fell a little bit shorter than the other ones as far as stats, perk options, availability, or just the way that they function. But every single one of them are doing really well. You could really use any of them. At number 5, we have the Hawk Moon, an exotic hand cannon that released this season with a very interesting new gimmick with the extra damage, incredible aim assistance, meaning it's really great for consoles and controllers, and will probably even move up on the chart once we get our random rolls, giving it a lot more options. At number four, we have the Ace of Spades. In my opinion, one of the most well-built weapons, incredible range, lots of great stats on it. Two perks that are actually four perks. That's damage perk, reload perk, dragonfly, the radar aim down sights, an incredible weapon all around, easy to use. Probably, if you don't know about hand cannons or unfamiliar, Ace of Spades is gonna be the best starting point. And finally, we have the 120 RPM hand cannons. Like I said before, more comfortable at getting body shots and headshots together an extra damage perk to easily move up to a two-shot headshot. And of course, the best of the best. At number one, we have the Sturm, again, because of those exotic tier stats, nearly maxing out its range with the Catalyst, giving it 20 range and 40 handling. The biggest issue with these is usually handling that is pretty much solved with that masterwork. And that is going to be pretty much the end of the video. That's going to be the end of the spreadsheet. I realize I went through that pretty briefly, very quickly. There's a lot to say about a lot of these weapons. If I were to say everything I wanted to say, this could easily easily get to be over a two hour video. I just wanted to give you a general frame. If you had a specific question, please let me know in the comments down below or head over to one of my live streams and we can have a better interaction. Because the fact is, just like you, I'm still learning and I wanna make the best spreadsheet possible, so I obviously need your help. Of course, you have to tell me why. You can't just say something is your favor, you have to tell me why. And lastly, I do hope you guys are having a good winter break with your families, your friends, or just getting gifts in general. I do hope you guys have a good one. But yeah, that's gonna be the end of it. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Midnight Chronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.